Hi, and welcome to today's session, Accelerating SaaS Using High-Performing File Systems on Amazon Web Services. My name is Daryl Osborne, and I'm a Solutions Architect at AWS. I'm a member of the Amazon EFS and FSx service teams, and I work with customers on their file services needs, evangelizing AWS native file services and sharing best practices on running our fully managed file systems on AWS. When running efficient, high-performing SaaS applications in the cloud is critical to your business, deploying the right storage architecture could be the difference between success and failure. However, running a high-performing parallel file system is difficult and often very expensive to set up, run, and maintain. What if you could offload this to someone else, someone with expertise and with virtually unlimited resources? Well, you can. This presentation is based on a white paper I wrote that guides you through selecting Amazon FSx for Lustre when running SaaS Grid on AWS. It also discusses the different types of file servers available on AWS and which are best suited to access these high-performing file systems. Amazon Web Services is the world's most comprehensive and broadly adopted cloud platform, offering over 175 featured services from data centers globally. Millions of customers, including the fastest growing startups, largest enterprises, and leading government agencies are using AWS to lower costs, become more agile, and innovate faster. These customers want to spend less time deploying, managing, and troubleshooting infrastructure, and more time focusing on their core business. There are several papers available that will help you understand how SaaS performs IO, as well as the minimum IO requirements for SaaS file systems. These papers outline the recommended IO metrics for file systems that support SaaS deployments, and they identify guidelines that can help you with provisioning and tuning IO characteristics for optimal SaaS performance. The IO throughput requirements for SaaS compute tier are, are very simple. Uh, each node should have at least eight gigabytes of memory per physical core. For permanent SAS data files, SAS requires a minimum I.O. throughput rate of 75 to 100 megabytes per second per physical core. For SAS work and util lock file systems, SAS requires a minimum I.O. throughput rate of 125 megabytes per second per physical core. So the overall I.O. throughput should be at minimum 100 to 125 megabytes per second per physical core. SAS data stores persistent data for SAS workloads and resulting SAS output files. These file systems are typically read heavy with uh, a, around 80 to 20 or 60 to 40 read write ratios. SAS work is the scratch working space for SAS jobs. It is used to perform the, the, the working storage activities for single threaded SAS procedures. These file systems are typically balanced between read and write activity with a 50-50 read-write ratio. Util lock is the same type of space for multi-threaded SAS procedures. So util lock by default is placed in the, the, the subdirectory underneath SAS work. Uh, so it too is typically balanced between read and write activity with a 50-50 read-write ratio. We are proposing you use Amazon FSx for Lustre persistent file systems for SAS data, SAS work, and util lock which is able to meet and exceed file system performance recommendations from SAS when accessed from certain Amazon EC2 instance families. This combination allows you to simplify your SAS grid design and deployment and reduce cost. Let me give you an example price comparison for SAS grid um, compute. So if you have a requirement of four physical cores and 64 gigabytes of memory per compute node, we would recommend one of these three instance types. Some of them have instance store volumes attached to them included in the price. And this pricing is uh, Northern Virginia um, pricing. Say you also have a requirement for SAS work and util lock per node of 600 gigabytes. Based on those, we would eliminate one of those instances because it doesn't have enough um, instance store volumes to satisfy that requirement. But the R5N also doesn't have instance store volumes, but we would recommend using FSx for Lustre for SAS work and util lock. So we just need to allocate 600 gigabytes per compute node on the FSx for Lustre file system to accommodate this, to offload 
um, SAS work and util lock to FSX for Lustre. If we have 10 nodes within our environment, the, the monthly price would be roughly $6,600 for the i3 EN instances, or $3,900 for the R5Ns, plus the 600 gigabytes of FSX for Lustre storage per node. That would give you a monthly savings of $2,600 or 40.23%. Amazon FSx for Lustre is a fully managed version of the Lustre parallel file system. And Lustre file systems provide throughput up to hundreds of gigabytes per second and millions of IOPS. It provides consistent sub-millisecond latencies due to the parallel file system design when clients talk directly to servers. There's in-memory caching and there's also SSD-based storage. And when using the recommended persistent file systems, stored vol storage volumes are replicated to give you a high durability uh, and high availability within that availability zone. It supports hundreds of thousands of cores for even the most massive scale out compute workloads. Each Amazon FSx for Lustre file system is comprised of file servers that the clients communicate with and a set of disks attached to each file server that stores your data. Each file server employs a fast in-memory cache to enhance performance for the most frequently accessed data. When a client accesses data that's stored in the in-memory cache, the file server doesn't need to read it from disk, which reduces latency and increases the total amount of throughput you can drive. The following diagram illustrates the paths of a write operation, a read operation served from disk, and a read operation served from in-memory cache. When you read data that is stored on the file server's in-memory cache, file system performance is determined by the network throughput. When you write data to your file system, or when you read data that is not stored in the in-memory cache, file system performance is determined by the lower of the network throughput and the disk throughput. Ultimately, FSx for Lustre's capabilities make it faster and cheaper to process your data sets. You don't want your compute bottlenecked by I.O. FSx for Lustre is designed so that doesn't happen. There is tight integration with S3, which reduces overhead of orchestrating movement back and forth between S3 and FSx for Lustre. There are different deployment types for short-term and long-term workloads. And it is, fully managed, it is a fully managed POSIX file system that is compatible with all Linux workloads. And there are a number of ways to use Amazon FSx for Lustre to reduce your overall TCO. Amazon FSx for Lustre offers a choice between scratch and persistent file systems for short-term and long-term data processing. Scratch file systems are ideal for temporary storage and shorter-term processing of data. Data is not replicated and does not persist if a file server fails. Persistent file systems are ideal for long-term storage and workloads. In persistent file systems, data is replicated and file servers are replaced if they fail. Because of this higher data durability and higher availability of persistent file systems, we recommend persistent file systems for all types of SAS grid data, including SAS work, SAS data, and util lock. There's a lot of information on this slide, but here are a few key takeaways. Persistent file systems have higher availability and durability than Scratch. Metadata and storage servers are automatically replaced on failure, and storage is replicated within the same availability zone. I'll talk more about performance uh, differences in, in the next slide. Both can achieve millions of IOPS and sub-millisecond latencies regardless of the size of the file system. Encryption of data at rest and in transit are available for both file systems. And file systems can be 1.2 terabytes or 2.4 terabytes. And you can have larger file systems in increments of 2.4 terabytes. Here I'm comparing the performance characteristics of scratch and persistent file systems. The throughput that a file system supports is proportional to its storage capacity. File systems scale to hundreds of gigabytes per second of throughput in millions of IOPS. It also supports concurrent access to the same file or directory from thousands of compute instances. Amazon FSx provides burst read throughput using a network I.O. credit mechanism to allocate network bandwidth based on average bandwidth usage. 
The file systems accrue credits when their file system usage is below their baseline limits and can use these credits when they perform network um, data operations. So just to recap, we do recommend using persistent file systems for FSx for Lester uh, for all your SAS grid libraries, including SAS data, SAS work, and util lock. Today, we're available in 12 regions, and we continue to launch in uh, launch FSx for Lester in other AWS regions around the globe. Uh, so uh, as an example, on March 27th, we launched Amazon FSx in our Hong Kong region. So if any of you are familiar with Lester and have deployed it, uh, I, I hope you'll be amazed at how simple and quick you can create an FSx for Lester file system is. So let's go to the Amazon FSx console. So from the AWS console, uh, in the find services, we just type in FSx. From the FSx console, we select create file system. And from the select file system type window, we select Amazon FSx for Lester. Scroll to the bottom and click on next. The file system name is optional. It's just a key value pair for the resource. So here we could just type in SAS grid demo. Deployment type can either be scratch or persistent. So again, we recommend persistent deployment type file systems for um, using FSx for Lester for, for SAS grid. Uh, for the storage capacity, so I recommend selecting or determining storage capacity based on the higher of these two characteristics. Uh, first, of course, it's the, the amount of data you have to store. Uh, so that's very important. You need to have the file system large enough to store your data. Uh, the second is based on the amount of throughput you want to achieve. Because the throughput of the file system is proportional to the amount of um, storage capacity you have, you'll also want to, uh, to set the storage capacity to, uh, to, to determine how much throughput you want to achieve. So if you select the larger of the two, uh, you, should be, you should be fine. Uh, so here in this example, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select input 100.8 uh, terabytes. Uh, so these are increments in increments of 2.4 terabytes. The throughput capacity per unit of storage, which is per terabyte, um, I'm going to go ahead and select the 200 megabytes per second per terabyte. That gives me a total throughput capacity, aggregate throughput capacity, of uh, 19,688 megabytes per second. As I scroll down, I can select the VPC uh, that I want to create my file system in, uh, the security group that's going to be attached to my file system, and the subnet where the, um, this, the uh, FSx for Lester file system will reside. I can select the AWS KMS encryption key used uh, to encrypt the data at rest. I can also select the data repository um, that's going to be used for integration. So this is optional, and this is, would be an S3 bucket that will be linked to the file system. So when the file system is created, any uh, objects in the S3 bucket will be created as files and directories within the file system. Now, and, and when the file system is created, only the metadata is created for those objects. Um, upon first access, uh, FSx for Lustre will transparently get the data from S3 and uh, copy it over to the file system and then deliver it to the client. Uh, so after that, any subsequent access to that data is going to be delivered from FSx for Lustre. So it really simplifies the, the movement of data between uh, FSx for Lustre and S3. Um, you can also, if you, if you uh, write new data or make changes to existing files, you can export those changes back to S3 with a simple data repository task um, export API, which we have. Uh, so again, the movement between S3 and FSx in either direction is, is very much simplified uh, with FSx for Lustre. I'm going to leave that um, as, as none for now. Next, we have the, the, uh, the maintenance preference. So this is a 30-minute window each week that maintenance could be performed on your file system. So we, we don't take advantage of this every week. Uh, but uh, as an example, if there was a critical patch that was uh, released for, uh, for your file system, uh, that we would take advantage of this 30-minute window that week in order to patch that file system. So um, something to keep in mind, and you can go ahead and set the, uh, the start time of that 30-minute window. 
uh, that 30 minute weekly window um, here within the uh, within the setting. I'll go ahead and click on next. I can review all the different uh, attributes of my file system and click create file system. So within a few minutes, I will have a 100.8 uh, terabyte file system uh, ready for me and ready for my, my SAS grid workload. So now that we've selected our recommended file system for SAS data, SAS work, and UTIL lock, we need to make sure that we select an Amazon EC2 instance for the compute nodes in order to achieve the file system performance recommendations. With over 260 different Amazon EC2 instance types to choose from, you may be looking for guidance on which instance families best align with these recommendations. Aligning these recommendations with EC2 resource characteristics is critical in selecting the right EC2 instance family or type. So, which one do you choose? To help you with this selection, I ran a series of highly parallel network throughput tests from individual EC2 instances against a 100.8 terabyte FSX for Lustre file system, which had an aggregate throughput capacity of 19.688 gigabytes per second. IOR was used to generate write activity to the file system using parallel threads and direct IO, so I was bypassing IO buffers. These tests were run in multiple AWS regions, so Northern Virginia, Ohio, Oregon, and Ireland. Using multiple EC2 instance families identified here, um, I ran these tests. So based on these tests, I narrowed down the field to five instance families that I recommend the i3EN, the M5N, the M5DN, the R5N, and the R5DN. So those are the, the instance families that um, sort of align with the recommended minimum uh, requirements for SAS grid, both for network performance and memory. If we look closer to these five instance families, I ran an IOR write test using multiple threads against all the instances in all of these families, all using Amazon FSx for Lustre as that backend storage system. So to achieve the maximum throughput per instance accessing uh, that persistent FSx for Lustre file system, we recommend using multiple threads or run multiple jobs per EC2 instance. We have to work within the laws of physics. FSx for Lustre is a high performance file system access over the network. There is added latency when accessing storage over the network compared to local disks. So in order to achieve the levels of throughput, Amazon FSx, with Amazon FSx, you need to use multiple threads per instance. If your workload is single threaded, you may consider using instance families with instance store local NVMe disks for SAS work and util lock as you can achieve these levels of throughput to local NVMe drives when using single threads. Because you're not in the business of running large-scale, cloud-optimized parallel file systems, we recommend using Amazon FSx for Lustre persistent file systems for all SAS grid, including SAS data, SAS work, and util lock. This allows you to focus more on running your business and the SAS grid application and less on managing the high-performing file system. Your goal with selecting a file system for your SAS deployment is to make sure you get consistent low latencies, high throughput, and millions of IOPS so your SAS jobs complete within the expected timeframe. While there are storage, other storage options for running SAS grid on AWS, like Amazon Elastic File System, or do-it-yourself sort of DIY file systems using Amazon EC2, uh, and either instant store volumes or Amazon Elastic Block Store or EBS, or even third-party um, storage solutions. These offerings add cost and complexity and may impact performance, availability, and data durability. We recommend Amazon FSx for Lustre for its ease of use, quick deployment, performance, simplicity, availability, and durability. We also recommend using M5N and R5N Amazon EC2 instance families for SAS grid compute nodes when accessing the SAS grid libraries hosted on Amazon FSx for Lustre. Thanks for watching and have a great day.